Yeah, thanks, Rijn, for uh, warming up the crowd. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about uh, some stuff, some new stuff actually uh, where uh, we've do, been doing on uh, getting, especially person job fit, uh, more visible, more actionable with employees and to see if they recognize the type of work we do in practice. And if you could combine this type of more actionable measurement approach also to measures that we traditionally use now in uh, academia. And this is a, like, a, like a practice uh, academia validation project. See it like this. So this is the right spot uh, to do this. So I'm very uh, interested in your remarks, your critics, uh, your crucifixions. Uh, <laughs> I don't care actually, uh, it's all worth uh, 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 the day, I hope. Uh, so it's, uh, maybe for those who do, you don't know, uh, I'm not an academia, I'm at TNO. TNO is an institute for applied research. We do a lot of governmental research, but also for companies. And we do it evidence-based, so we try to take the fundamental research from the universities and put it into more ac actionable types of devices, training, and that sort of stuff. So then you know. Um, one thing that got me triggered, and just to, to set the scene a little bit, is uh, is I'm very interested now in reading the conclusions of academic papers, and especially the pr pr practical implications that are given. And uh, it's not about you or us or me, it's about how these things go about sometimes in, in journals. And this is uh, one recent paper uh, on a very interesting topic, temporal activity in, in person job uh, fit, things we were talking about. And I was searching, okay, well, and then you come to the conclusion, and it, the article is great, and then the last sentence comes to mind. And I read this. Practitioners seeking ways to improve the effect of satisfaction of their workforce uh, may consider doing so by improving external perceived fit of their employees with the job and the organization. I'm a lot in organization. If I would suggest this to a practitioner, he would, she would look at me like, and now, what are we going to do now? Uh, thanks very much. Um, it's been great, uh, but I don't think I get another call uh, back from him or her. It's no problem. You know, sometimes these things are, are just not, uh, this is not the outlet for practitioner stuff, but uh, I'm always interested in these type of sentences. Sometimes it goes well, sometimes not. So what it triggers with me always, and that's my starting point for today, is then it begins. What should be improved of the fit? What is, uh, what is not fitting, actually? Uh, what is going on then? Sure, there is a perceived fit that you say, well, there's something wrong with me and the organization or with my job. And mostly also interesting is the fact that how much is actually not fitting. Uh, and we can put that into a, a scale, point se uh, 0.1 to 7, but look at the work you do. How much actually of the activities you do, you think, this is actually not what I want. But a part of the other activities that you do are actually those who, that fit you quite well. And then the, ob the object comes not like, is there a general measure of uh, I, I don't fit or I do fit, but how much of the job is actually not fitting or, uh, and how much do I like? And is it a big part or a small part? And then you can point more directly maybe to uh, fit issues or misfit issues that you can solve at the task level. And that's more or less the, the thing I want to talk about. Um, so, the problem for me is how do you get, and that's, that's my work, how do you get the research in uh, findings and uh, things we do which are great, how do we get them more actionable? And that is, I think, uh, what uh, lots of taxpayers will ask themselves, and, uh, <laughs> and I'm also <laughs> sometimes on the taxpayer's uh, account, but uh, I think that's, that's just the driver for such, uh, such things to do. So, um, I'm going to talk about a little bit more like uh, how to address these types of questions. And uh, actually, I read something from you, John, uh, which I didn't know, but you uh, uh, did do a lot of mapping fit, making it more visual. So I have to uh, uh, read that very much. So I'm really th uh, I'm curious what you think of uh, the stuff. Yeah, and, 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 and that's what also one of the approaches I want to take today. Uh, how what should be improved? Can you make it more visible? Can you make it more uh, uh, that people understand actually how their work is fitting or misfitting? Uh, what is not fitting? And I expect that a lot of these things, uh, and I'm not talking about P 
PO fit, but more person job fit, is happening on task level. So things, some things that fit, some things that don't fit. And also the measurement should also be, can you put it into another measurement perspective? We have questionnaires, we have those skills, we have lots of stuff, but is there also another way of measuring the type of fit uh, at the task level uh, or not? So these uh, things uh, I want to address today. And what we use in practice now, and it has been involved for, uh, for some years uh, now, is that we have a, a web-based application in which people map their work. Uh, what are your tasks and what is your... Uh, and they do it digitally right now. So they are in these types of Star Wars, Star Trek kind of uh, uh, settings and groups. And the advantage of this stuff is, is that you, you can use it and people are attracted or are, are, uh, are uh, asked to, to map their own jobs or their fit. Uh, and all the digital stuff makes it more easy or more possible to measure actually what people are doing within these types of uh, approaches. And I'll give you some more examples of uh, what we do with that data. Uh, but some screenshots of what we, uh, what we built, type of applications that people, and it's in Dutch here, enter their work tasks. And it's based on, the, uh, maybe you know it, the job crafting exercise, the way in which task mapping is also one of the parts. That's the basis, but we developed it more towards uh, a team application as well. And people just say, well, this is my job, for instance, in Dutch. Uh, I visit conferences, uh, I do workshops, I do contract research. I do statistics, uh, scientific research, having meetings, doing uh, acquisition, email. These are the things people do in their jobs. And not all of them are likable to me. Or not, or not. So when they do that, they put it into a, 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 like a map with, uh, with bigger tasks and smaller tasks, uh, depending on the relative time they spend on those tasks. And then they also color it with their own uh, strength, needs, uh, risk, risks in the job, so you get a, a mapping of uh, how much is actually uh, 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 fitting right, how much is a little bit fitting maybe, and how much is not fitting or non-fitting as well. So this is what they do in practice. This, this is an application you can use it uh, in that sense. So <clears throat> what do I want to talk about today? Uh, what we do in the web-based application is that we, we take the person and we take the job and we de decompose the job into tasks and we put the person in the task and let them ask them, what do you think of these tasks? What do you bring to your work? What fits with these tasks? And what risks are involved conducting these tasks? So some questions are, to what extent are which tasks non-fitting, uh, misfitting with your individual needs and strength? This is more the, uh, that side. And also, to what extent are which tasks non or misfitting with the individual abilities to cope with these demands? So in this sense, people would say that they uh, uh, feel that they have a risk or they feel tired, for instance, in their job, and they can pinpoint it to certain tasks that, that tire them out or that make them tired. So it's not the job that's tiring, it's those tasks, you know, those uh, meetings, that's where you walk out tired. It's not the whole job that makes you tired. So they, they, they put those risks on tasks that are really tiring or not able to cope with the, the, the demands, the cognitive demands or the the physical demands of that type of tasks. And then the question is for a measurement approach, do aggregate levels of those person tasks uh, uh, fit relate to traditional person job fit measures? So could you take this data, this task data, and put it into perspective or uh, relate it to also traditional uh, measures like uh, we used here from Cable and, uh, and Deroux? So this is, this is the, uh, the validation uh, type of uh, approach we took. <coughs> and where did we do this? We did, did this in collaboration with Tilburg University. And this is actually how people were in an insurance company where we did this uh, on, on several occasions. And here you see them using uh, the, toolage to, uh, uh, the tooling to, uh, to, 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 to take these steps. I will get more into detail on what we actually did, because that's important and also for the feedback to get, because here it always gets tricky. Uh, what do we have? We have 45 people uh, uh, who entered a workshop in which they uh, did this stuff. They mapped their job, for instance. And one week prior to the workshop, we sent them, sent them a questionnaire with some traditional measures and all sorts of things. Uh, just before the workshop, uh, just before entering it, they had to had a, had a screen in which they could fill out self-reports on job satisfaction and uh, job performance. And during the workshop, 
uh, they were collecting the person task fit data. So we're not expecting any causal relationships. I just want to divide the measurement moments just to make sure there's no common method uh, uh, thing going on there and also have different measurements approach. Just so maybe that is a good way to, to build up this uh, stuff. Uh, and then see if, and also especially uh, collect the data uh, on the person's job before the workshop because the workshop itself could also influence their, their, uh, 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 their perception of the person's job fit and that, that is not what we wanted to check. So what do you do in those, uh, those workshops? Uh, you have a job, you divide them into tasks and in this case, for instance, an insurance agent and these are real tasks uh, that they uh, would map. So insurance agent would say checking file work, support first manager, work planning, telephone service, client respondents, processing complaints, now you see that's typical administrative, uh, more insurance like, sometimes with clients, sometimes with managers, uh, processing costs, auditing of work colleagues. These are uh, real tasks, so it's not uh, uh, that they, uh, in, and this is a female uh, insurance agent, 20, uh, 36 years old now. This is what you get out of the data. Uh, for 45 people. Uh, second thing they do is that they, what I already said, they could uh, give a relative weight on how big the task is uh, a, a part of their job. So how much time they spend on the tasks. Just to get an idea of that not every task has the same impact on people because not every task is perform, performed in the same amount of time. And that's, that's important, I think, uh, in doing this stuff. So, then you get to the, to the part where people actually uh, uh, map their job and then they put into perspective uh, their needs and strength in the blue plus types of bullets, uh, bu what's it called, uh, bullets. For instance, th this one said, well, what do I bring to my work? What is my strength? What, what are people, are, uh, are what, what's the thing that the people uh, uh, know about me that's good? Uh, for instance, my all-round experience of the whole process, that's what I bring to work. Uh, what I do I like, what is my need, what is, what's finally important is to feel the gratitude of clients when they are helped. And what's also important in need, a social need, is getting the, the, the contact with colleagues. That's an important need. These are just three examples. There's lots more that they, that they leave there. And then they also report the risks. What do you uh, run into when you work, which is tiring, which is uh, wearing you out. Uh, angry, the anger when clients don't understand uh, uh, me as an insurance agent. Uh, the lack of control I have over time. I can't control uh, uh, the, the planning, for instance. Uh, and I have also occasional neck pains. Also, in my job, that's what I run into. It's a very diverse set of things that you run into in your job. But it's not me measuring it, it's them saying it. And that's the, that's the difference. Uh, I don't pre-subscribe that they have to fill out such a things. They just give me the qualitative uh, data on what the experience in their job. Uh, and then the, the, the next step is ask them which tasks best fulfill your work needs and best utilize your personal strengths. So where are the good things in your work come up? And these are the work tasks that are uh, for her, uh, in this sense, support the first manager, work planning, telephone service, train new colleagues. These are the, the nicer tasks, you know, they, they, are, are doing, they are fitting the need, fitting the strength, and this is, uh, this is what, what they do. Next step they order uh, where, in which task you, do you run into your work-related well-being risks. In which task specifically are you having occasional neck pains? You know, it's with a computer task, for instance. It's not on a, on a, on a social task. So make the difference between which task uh, you encounter uh, certain problems. Then they do this, and you see that here people can map it uh, like a task, like processing complaints, that they have negative uh, uh, aspects on that. But you see also that sometimes on one task, they map it as a double. Like it's and positive, and fitting, and negative. So, and this is not quite uncommon, actually. So, this is what they do. And we have one category left, and that's where nothing is placed. So it doesn't do anything with people, like checking file works. It doesn't find it important, there's no risk. It's just there, it's part of your job, so to say. So these are the categorizations we make in fitting this, and if you would have put it to a fit perspective, four categories of task fit uh, you could uh, do like this. And one is the fitting tasks, which are all uh, the blue ones. You have the pure misfitting tasks, you have the, the misfitting and misfitting tasks, so with the, the dip, with the parentheses. And you have the non-fitting task, which nothing happens. 
And the question is, if we, have the if we know the time that is spent on fitting tasks, misfitting tasks, could we relate that type of measure to actual measures of PG fit uh, used in traditional research? So could we make that bridge? <coughs> what do you actually get out of this type of thing? What uh, this insur insurance agent sees in the tool is that she gets feedback on her tasks. And she also sees that here on the risk side, lots of small tasks are there, for instance. And all these small tasks contain more or less uh, negative things. She also has uh, a proportion of 20% that of her time spending on fitting tasks. 40% is spending on misfit fit and misfitting tasks, and 18% is spent on non-fitting tasks. So it gives you an idea of how the work day or work week or work months of somebody evolves and how they run into fit or misfit on a, in their work on a task level basis. So this is important that they see this and that they understand this, and this is what they get. So in one job, you have different sorts of fit, say like that, as you, as you measure it on a task level. Now you get into the combination of, of uh, relating the percentages of task time on fitting tasks to the measure. So is there a correlation or a regression coefficient that's in the right direction which you expect uh, or not? And I, uh, this is what we did. We had four measures. We measured uh, supplies needs, uh, of supplies values fit, uh, demands abilities fit, job satisfaction and job performance. And here you find the covariates, gender, age, work hours per week. And here you see uh, uh, separately uh, we entered the, uh, the task uh, things. Because if you combine them, it's really strange because they are dependent on each other very much. Because if you do the one, you can't do the other. And so, you have to enter them separately because otherwise it gets really confounding. But okay, we'll have your reaction on that in a minute. Uh, what you see here is that for 66%, the mean that 66% of the 100 of the total is two-faced or is fit non-fitting. So people experience both. 20% uh, on average is fitting. Uh, non-fitting is, is the, the smallest category and about 9% is, is a pure uh, misfitting in, their, in, my, in this definition. And when you relate that to uh, the outcome measures in a regression, you see that uh, for the fitting task, there's a relationship uh, with uh, supplies values need uh, fit. So they feel that, uh, that the needs of themselves are aligned with the needs of their job. <coughs> and you see also the combination with job satisfaction. So it's more on the effective side of things. It looks like that. If you talk about the percentage of misfitting tasks, that negative relates to demands and abilities fit. Maybe there's something on, the, on that that they can't cope with the demands of their job, and that's why they also say you don't have the skills or the, uh, the knowledge to deal with my work in a certain extent. Uh, this is not significant, but almost. And, but you see there, uh, there's a relationship with, uh, with job performance. One, uh, th these are just one item measures on how well do I perform on my job, just like But still, uh, uh, there's a negative uh, uh, relationship which states that having more misfit tasks in your work or having more time spent on those tasks is related to less feeling of being a good performer in your job. Misfitting tasks does a little bit in between. It has no relationship with the SV fit, but here you see in different direction. You see that it also doesn't have a relationship with the, with the demands abilities fit, but it has a negative relationship with the, SV, uh, with the supplies values, perceived supplies values fit type of questions. And non-fitting task doesn't do anything in that respect. So, what could you say? This is just preliminary uh, stuff. There, there, there are several outcomes maybe in the same job. You have a percentage of fitting tasks that are satisfiers. If they grow in, in percentage, you see that they get more satisfied, they feel that their needs are more met in their job. On the other hand, if you have like a double uh, fit, misfit, it's more like a dissatisfier. You feel that you want something, but you can't get it, maybe. It uh, doesn't feel right. It dissatisfies you because you, maybe you can't get what you want, or you can't fully uh, experience the nice things on those tasks because it has a blockage or it has something negative on it. Last one, and this is an interesting one, actually. Uh, the misfitting tasks seem to have more not on the 
effective side, but more like a self-reports on the demands, abilities, and performance side. So it's more like I can't do my work correctly. It's not about my, me and my job, it's more about the performance expectations in my job and how I can meet them. And if there are lots of those small, maybe in this case, uh, this is the insurance agent, those small tasks which I, which I can't do correctly or which I don't feel uh, that they fit me anymore in my job, I don't know if you, that's a good term, uh, I feel that my whole job performance is blocked in a way by these types of tasks. So this is actually the state of where, yeah, where, where we're doing this stuff and validating it with uh, traditional measures. And what's actionable about this is that we can say, if, there's, if you could, could say, well, if you would uh, uh, alter the task time on certain tasks, uh, then you could also improve the satisfaction. Or you could also improve the, the feeling of fit. So in this case, we could pinpoint as well, well, maybe you should do something with your bag for dealing here, with your work planning. You can point out which task actually you have to intervene on. And normally you're a little bit left in the mist there. Like, okay, it doesn't fit or it doesn't fit, but where does it, does it fit or where does it doesn't fit, does it not fit? <laughs> and here you can get into contact with employees to say, what for you is really important to, to change in your job, for instance? Is it, do you want more fit? Do you want less misfit? Do you want the misfit on the also fitting tasks? What it gone? And that's a discussion that you can have, which I notice already. People have very different ways of going about this type of changing uh, your job uh, fits. Another actionable uh, idea is that you don't only know which tasks are not fitting, you also know what's on the tasks that is not fitting. So in this case, telephone contact, she said, gratitude when clients are helped. And also you see here, I'm angry when they don't understand me. So you feel in these, this task, you feel the, the complexity of those two emotions uh, hitting each other, on a, maybe on a weekly basis. And then you could say, well, if you know that, maybe you could do something with it, or maybe you could, could more celebrate these types of things so that, the, that this is less an obstacle for you, or you get some training how to get on with people who don't understand you, I don't know. These are all questions that people can ask themselves afterwards, but still they have to see what actually the fit or misfit means on the task level to the employee. That's an important issue. So, uh, ending on this note, that's actually where we, I started uh, uh, with this sentence, what can we do on this? And some conclusions in the end are, I think there are possibilities to enrich the real rigor in PG fit with more actionable approaches, which are both needed and can both support each other uh, towards uh, uh, different goals. Uh, what I experience is that employees are very much able to visualize their jobs in this, this way and very much able to think about fit and talk about fit, only not maybe in the terms we, uh, we, uh, we know. Uh, and the first set of uh, first test this uh, uh, shows that it follows a little bit the distinction we know already from uh, 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 supplies and uh, values fit and uh, demands abilities fit and that uh, the performance relation is more at, uh, 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 on the DA fit type of uh, things, and the effective relation is more on the supplies needs uh, fit. So and this is also the pattern that we find in this, uh, in this uh, study. Well, fit and misfit, and it was already mentioned a couple of times these, these days, can be argued to be distinct phenomena. Uh, however, there can also be a, a fit and misfit at the same time on the same task. And these are interesting things, because these are maybe certain stresses that we don't have clear uh, vision on yet, and we can't measure them easily with a questionnaire, actually, in this way. Uh, and that they also can be a dissatisfier in that sense. Uh, of course, the sample size is small, and it's very specific. It's an insurance company with uh, 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 quite young people working there, and we should do more of this stuff in different occupational samples, see if these results hold. And lastly, the approach is very useful to target customized solutions for jobs. See where fit uh, can be changed and also monitor the, the fit change in terms of uh, misfitting or fitting task time. So the exposure to, uh, to certain tasks that you have to do. And this is not, yeah, this is where we are now. And I really much like to have your input, feedback, criticism, crucifications. So thank you.